This is the Bob and Jeff Show, starring Bob Lutz. Whatever order of name, Robert Lutz Douglas, whatever you call me, I'm, I'll answer. That would be terrific. That would be great, huh? Terrific. That was terrific. In Jason Duda, for today anyway. I'm, I'm not a big deal. I've been saying that for the last five, six years. But people wearing my jersey or then my jersey's hanging at interest. Wow! Isn't that exciting? 97.5 in 1240 KFH. It's going to be legend. Wait for it. And I hope you're not lactose intolerant because the second half of that word is dairy. Legendary. Are you ready? Let's go! Hello, everybody, and welcome to Thursday edition of the Bob and Jeff Show here on KFH Radio. Today, the esteemed Jason Duda is in for Jeff. You know Jason. He's been on this show many, many times over the years. How are you today? Uh, not bad. How about yourself? Well, something popped up here on my screen, and you know I like to uh, improvise this first segment. We yeah. never script it out. No, I know. No. no. That, I don't like scripts. Something popped up here. You know how you got, uh, like, Norton kind of takes care of my, you know, well, what do you call it? Spamware, spam. Yeah, whatever they whatever. do. Whatever, whatever they do, they Pop take ups. care of my computer. Uh, and make sure nothing bad happens. Here's the message. We found 33,530 performance issues on your PC. Now, what's a guy to do? What, what, am, I, what am I supposed to do with that? Why don't they just say we found a lot of problems? Uh, what am I supposed to do? Does it say, like, I mean, click here or anything? You talk about being overwhelmed. There's 587 compu- corrupted registries. There's four gigabytes of system junk. There's 23 apps that are slowing me down. And there's 777 broken shortcuts. No idea what that means. Now, it's asking me, do I go ahead and resolve this? So I press the resolve button, and here's what will happen. We'll fix this for $85.99. You think so? Well, I I think so, although I... I already pay for Norton. If so, you, I, so I press that, and it, maybe it's resolving the issues. I have no idea. Maybe I'm going to notice in 10 minutes, however long it takes to resolve the issues, maybe I'm going to notice a much faster, streamlined ability to work on this computer. See, and my th- thought is right away is what are you looking at on your computer that causes you to have all these problems i don't know oh i got an idea i I look at the no i'm not i don't look at that oh i got an idea what i look at is a bunch of stuff (laughs) do you uh do you work on a laptop ever or do you just have your uh what's that Uh, i do uh ipad yeah i do a little bit not very much though but uh, you're on your ipad a lot i'm on the ipad a lot how many ipads have you gone through one. How long have you had it? A while. I'm surprised it's lasted that long. Me too. But it's still there. Man, and apparently it works for you. And if it doesn't work, then I'll figure it out. But until then, I don't need a new one. No, you don't need a new one. You don't one. need a new one just to have a shiny new one. I got to have a laptop for the for oh, what I do. Yes. As, an, uh, as important as you are. You not need my, not my, not what I'm you saying. Need, you need all the gigabits or whatever they're you know, called. I'm in, I'm in a weird mood get. today. Oh, it's really? Not, not what I'm saying. You're in a weird mood today. See, if this was Jeff, I'd throw him out of the house now, and we'd move on. Uh, you go right ahead. I wasn't insinuating that I'm someone important. No, I, I'm just saying for what you're doing, you're important. No. And you need that's a laptop. Not what I'm insinuating either. I'm not important, so I just use I'm, my little what iPad. What I'm saying is that when it comes to working the way I work, I've got to have a laptop. Makes I've sense. I've got millions of files I got to keep track of. Doesn't mean I'm important. Just means I got I need a laptop. Well, obviously you're kind of important. You had 33,500 problems. Did your dad on your ever computer? get upset with you? All the time. I can see why. Yeah, all you the know, time. that's the first time. And he'd I'm a, be like, Dude, Jason, you're starting to be annoying. I'm an honest guy. And he'd say, I'll just come over there and kick your ass. Good for him. I think I'd like him. Well, he he would have. I would have liked was, him. Because he was uh, a tough guy when he played hockey. That's all he could do was fight. Because that's really the first time you've annoyed me. Good. Really. That's awesome. Like all these other times, no annoyance. Just I like it. I like the, the – now, Jeff – annoys me once or twice a week 
That's but it. That's really the first time. I wonder how much I annoy him. <laughs> uh, I, it, maybe he'll tell us when we make picks. Okay. Uh, and I'm being honest. I'm. I'm. I don't hold any punches. I don't believe in just saying things for the sake of saying it. Once or twice a week, he says something on the show that that annoys me, and I think it's obvious when that happens. It Today, is. for for whatever reason, the trying to say that I feel like I'm more important that annoyed me. Oh. Well, I'm not sure if I'm going to apologize for that. No, you don't need to apologize. I just, never said I was going to. I don't want anybody to think that I think that I think I'm more important I, than anyone. I didn't say that you think you're important. I said I think you're important, so you need a laptop. Whereas I don't need a laptop. I usually just need an iPad. Anybody who thinks I'm important annoys me. How's that? Okay, that makes more sense. <laughs> I I don't want to be that guy. I I just uh, I the world is full of that right now, and certainly I've been accused of having an ego, which uh, I don't deny. I do have an ego, but my ego doesn't really serve me to the point to where I think I'm more important, or that anyone should think I'm more important. And in fact, when that happens, as you just found out, it annoys me. Fair enough. And it doesn't happen often. Not no. not many people are walking around saying, "Man, Bob, you're important." Hey, you. So, even th- is this making any sense? Not really, but I'm kind of enjoying you trying to talk about it. Well, I talk about anything. I know. I'm programmed to where for 22 hours a day I don't talk at all, and for two hours on radio, <laughs> I I talk about anything, and uh, I don't know why. I figure if they're going to give me a microphone and they're going to pay me. They probably want me to talk. That would be my guess. No doubt about it. I'm glad to hear that your dad, that you've experienced this. Oh, uh, all the time. Good. Like, Makes all me the time. happy. All the time. When he was around or he'd come down or we'd go up there, guaranteed. And he annoyed me as well. But it was all good in the end. All right. Uh, back to the computer issue. Still got the issues. Uh they want me to update to the advanced plan, and it's only $39. Oh, that's a lot cheaper than 85 <laughs> So the question then becomes, am I going to buy into this, or am I going to say, I'll accept the 33,530 performance issues that are slowing down my computer? It sounds daunting, right? They're, they're, like their goal is to scare the you-know-what out of you. Yes. And there are people my age who would look at that and go, Hazel, we got 33,000 issues on our computer. But we can solve it for $39. What do I do? And Hazel will yell down the stairs, fix it, Herb. And old Herbie pulls out the card. And Herb will do it. Pulls out the card, puts on a different set of glasses so he can see the numbers on the card, and punch it in. What are you going to do, Bob? I'm not going to fix it. Whoa! You're living on the edge today. $39 for the remainder of your current subscription. And then, you know, the next next subscription, they'll bump that up. Yeah. And when's when's your next subscription? Due? I don't, like I don't have a, any idea. In a week? <laughs> I don't have any idea. This almost seems like an unfair practice. Well. Especially when you're talking about old people. I thought if you paid for it, then how come they're not fixing it? Fifty nine ninety nine a year added to your current subscription renewal price. So this would actually cost sixty dollars a year to upgrade. Man, what a decision! Should we call Debbie during break and see what she says? That's a big number thirty three thousand. 530. This is the deepest I've ever gone into this. Normally, I just X out and yeah. ig- pretend like nothing uh, nothing happened. That's what I do. Uh, I'm Xing out. D- uh, are you sure? Wow. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this thing out of my toolbar. Oh, you're getting rid of it. There period. it goes. I'm done. I'll, t- I'll accept the 33000 If the computer crashes, I'll deal with that then. That makes sense. 
makes perfect sense. Good grief. That's how I'd have done it. Oh, I did want to ask you, uh, and we'll get to a bunch of other stuff coming up. Uh, the show today, Jeff Calkins uh, will join us to talk Memphis basketball. He works in journalism in Memphis, and he's kind of our Memphis go-to guy. Shockers in Memphis here at Coke Arena Sunday for a noon tip. It's going to be four degrees. Good thing they're inside. Good thing they're inside, but how many will will navigate that temperature to go to Coke Arena, even for a game against nationally ranked Memphis? It might depend on if the Chiefs win or not the night before. That's true. How hungover they are, is that what you mean? How hungover or upset. Could be an issue. Could be. So we'll talk with Jeff Calkins. We are trying to get Mitch Fiegel from Collegiate, their boys basketball coach. I have not yet heard back from him. Of course, he's in the midst of teaching, which you'd like him to be teaching rather than checking his phone for yeah, text messages. But it's the show. Yeah, well, you know? uh, listen, there, it's a, there's a debate to be had. What's more important? Exactly. Uh, confirming that you can come on the show or teaching calculus. I don't know what, what do you Mitch, use calculus for anyway. I don't know what Mitch teaches, but I'm going to presume he teaches calculus. That's fair. Uh, and then uh, we've got picks coming up at 3:25, and we're going to pick six uh, of the all six of the playoff games, plus the big three in basketball, KUK State and the Shockers. You ready? Well, of course. I mean, since Thanksgiving, I'm yeah, the yeah. You've had a couple of of down weeks. Oh, uh, uh, not a big deal. I'll total up last. I haven't even totaled up last week yet. Let's see here. You did okay. 20 po 24 points. You were 5-3. and three. Not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, you know, like I said, after Thanksgiving, I have a winning record. Jeff was 5-3. and three. Uh, He had, uh, let's see here, 12, 20, 27 points. What? I don't believe that. Uh, Max was 4-4. Four and four. And he scored 20 points. And I uh, I was only 3-5 and five for 18. So we all kind of bunched together, but I didn't have a good week. No. Nope. No. Nope. So we got picks coming up in hour number two. I, I was at uh, Walgreens picking up a prescription today, and I, I just got a cart. And I went through the store, and I picked out some things, things that we need here. Uh, and I picked out this pair of glasses. What are your thoughts on this pair I, of glasses? I, I noticed them when I came in. <laughs> like you, you're trying to get younger? Is that what this is? I'm not so sure these aren't women's glasses. Yeah, they might be. The color, I would say, is more of a woman's it's kind of a, glasses. It's kind of a bluish black. Uh, but what do you think? Give me your honest, honest assessment. They make you look like a professor. Really? Honest, honestly, if I was to walk in and see you, I'd be like, that's that's the prof right there. Wow. I haven't even looked at myself in a mirror with these. Glasses. Well, you just wait until you do. It'll be something. <laughs> Will I like the look? I don't know. I'm not sure. It's it is a totally different look. There's no question about that, because I don't think I'd ever seen you with like colored frames before so it's it was much different well you know you do and what it you, reminds me of a professor you do what you got to do and you look like you you did it now i'm just curious Man, those are weird looking that's what i'm saying that's but why they, you look they like look a good pop. they look fine they look fine <laughs> but it makes me think of a professor now, you have to realize that I never really went to college, so I'm not sure what a real professor looks like. Well, you just go, you're going by the stereotypical. That's what I'm doing. Look. That's what I'm doing. A little eggheadish, a little highbrow. Again, you're telling me I'm more important than anyone well, in a roundabout like, way. And, well, maybe it's because you looked like a professor when I came yeah, here. Yeah, again. I mean, I mean it, if we, we're going full circle here, you started the whole thing by wearing those glasses. It's not my and fault. That, that immediately made you think. This guy looks Bob important thinks today. He's, yeah, Bob thinks he's more important. Uh, Maybe you need to wear them wear them out and see what other people think. Well, I got the other pair right here. 
But I, you know, you always need a backup pair, and my backup pair broke. So these glasses I buy at Walgreens are just readers, and you hope they last six months or so, right? I mean, Fair yours enough. are probably prescription glasses. Yes. Well, you want those to last a while. I hope so. But I got to get my eyes checked again. Starting to uh, starting, starting to, to wane. Starting to wane again. Uh oh, what can't you see? But I haven't been for a, in a couple of years, so it's. My but what are you having trouble seeing? Are they bifocal lenses? They're trifocals. Good God! I got yeah, I know. You're basically blind. Like, that's blurry. That's normal. Now that I can see better onto your screen. <laughs> so you have to adjust your head. Well, normally if I'm just if I'm sitting. And watching, like, TV, everything's fine, or driving, or whatever. What if you took them off and tried to watch TV? I could still see it, but not as good. I mean, I could still see everything that was going on. See, I never wear my glasses when I'm watching TV because my eyesight is fine to watch TV. I never wear glasses to drive because my eyesight is fine. It's only when I have to read this. on a pa- I'm holding a paper up. Uh, close to my eyes if i were to take off my glasses yeah i wouldn't be able to I'd read. struggle to read that i wouldn't be able to read that that's why i got the trifocal so really small print i gotta look through the bottom of my glasses in order to read it i'll never forget but i need my glasses at night the most i notice i'll never forget when it became obvious to me and i probably fought it some But when it became obvious to me that I was going to need to check my eyes and figure out what's going on, uh, we were at the Big 12 basketball tournament. Might have, no, it was the Big 12, uh, up in Kansas City, and I'm courtside, and they bring a stat sheet to us. And I looked at it, and I said, I can't, that's tough for me to read. And that's the first time that I remember thinking to myself, I got to do something about this. So I tried some reading glasses, and ever since then, everything's been fine. I believe that was when I was 50, so a while back. Yeah, mine wasn't. I was Mine was probably 20 years ago. And I used to have, I could see everything, and when I was playing, I was okay, but I couldn't read anything. Like, the guys used to, it got to the point where the guys would, We'd be on the bench, and the guys would be like, "Dudes, what's the sign across on the on the dashboards?" And I couldn't make it out. And so they're they like, tweaking. "Which one?" And they're like, "The green one there." And I'm like, "I can't. I'm not sure." Well, it's green and yellow. It's Subway. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't read that. I couldn't read oh it. Oh my gosh! So then I had LASIK. How'd that go? Really good. I thought that's supposed to solve things forever. I was good for about eight years like i woke up that it doesn't take i mean it, the preparation takes the time i w- it was like 30 seconds an eye and you don't feel anything but then you got to wear glasses you go and basically have a nap and when i woke up about three hours after that i looked at the clock and i could read it perfect wow it was unbelievable and it stayed for about seven eight years and then it started going back to where it was again Huh. So then I just went I just went to the glasses because I didn't want to wear glasses. I couldn't wear contacts because I wanted to try contacts. Couldn't wear contacts. So we tried the Lasix and then it went back to. I'd hate to mess with contacts. I'd, I couldn't I, get them in my I couldn't get it. In, I couldn't get them in my eye. Exactly. I, I, I wouldn't like that. It took I, the doctor like 30 minutes to get one in my eye. Crazy. So I was like, well, I ain't doing that. I'm not fighting this battle. So here's the glasses. Away we go. That was. Well, I couldn't. I can't imagine you without glasses. Probably pretty good looking though. Oh, no doubt. Without the glasses. Oh, handsome. I mean, with the glasses, I can pull it off. But without the glasses, the handsomeness. But without the glasses, that's a matter of opinion. Wow. And tomorrow on the show, uh, we're going to work very hard to get Dia Duda for our guest for five questions. Good luck. Um, (laughs) Have you asked her about it? Oh, we talked about it. She was somebody, one of her patients came in and said, so w- they're wanting to get you on the show, and she didn't know what, what it was for. <laughs> so we had a chat. 
He's, I, I don't think I don't think that's going to happen. That will happen try. tomorrow. <laughs> Powers of persuasion, persuasion, my friend. I've got them. I always have had them. And uh, how do you think I get women to go out with me? <laughs> well, I guess I have to give exactly. you that. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Time for a break. When we come back, Jeff Calkins will join us. We'll talk some Memphis basketball ahead of the Tigers showing up here in Wichita to play with the Shockers. Sunday afternoon at noon at Coke Arena. Jeff Calkins is next. Bob Lutz, Jason Duda. This is the Bob and Jeff Show on 97.5 and 1240 KFH. Jeff Calkins joins us on our hotline. Jeff, a columnist for the Daily Memphian, longtime columnist at the Commercial Appeal, also the host of the Jeff Calkins Show in Memphis. Jeff, hello. Welcome. It's good to be back. How are y'all? Yeah, we're happy to have you. So we've got Memphis and Wichita State uh, coming up Sunday at noon at uh, Coke Arena here. Shockers uh, scuffling right now, not playing very good basketball. Memphis is winning, but I don't know how good a basketball they're playing. And all the upsets that are happening in college basketball right now, it's a, it's kind of been a strange start to the conference season. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Memphis, you know, you know, big picture, Memphis fans have gotten everything they wanted. Penny put together a, a really tough non-conference schedule and, um, they got through that with some significant wins. Although the teams they've beaten have taken some losses of late, they still have seven quad one and quad two wins, which is second most to Purdue in the country. So they, they got through, which they haven't done. They got through the non-conference schedule um, very well. They're ranked 13th in the country. Now they've won nine straight. But as you point out, lately in particular, every game against, um, against you know, inferior, what would seem to be inferior competition Every game has been come down to the, the final moments, including last night against UTSA. So, um, so they're winning still. Uh, they have a nine-game winning streak. They're winning still, but they have not looked impressive of late doing it. And you know, you can tell Penny's a little frustrated, and Memphis fans are wondering when they'll, you know, when they will uh, look like the team they they thought they could be, and that they looked like in the non-conference season. Well, is this just a case of them playing and take this for what you will down to the competition maybe a little bit, or is this maybe just kind of where they're at and they're pulling off these victories? Cause I pulled up this, the schedule and, and like you said, I mean, you go through the, the nine wins of the, in their streak here, 85, 80, 81, 75, 79, 77, 77, 75, 78, 75, 62, 59. Every game is close, but at least they're winning those games. Yeah, I mean, I, it it it's impossible to know at some level, right? Like the UTSA game last night was ridiculous. The UTSA is in the net; they're two eighty five, right? They're they're they were seven and eight. They're two eighty five. They were picked, I think, to finish last in the conference, and they came in here and scored now in overtime, but still, they scored more than hundred points. They hit seventeen threes. The Memphis perimeter defense was absolutely atrocious. Memphis was down by four points with one thirteen or one fifteen or something left in the game and barely escaped. Um, so that, that certainly sends up some red flags. Um, having said that, I mean, there is the old, do they take it seriously? You know, they, they've beaten Virginia. They've beaten Clemson. They've beaten Texas A&M. They've beaten Mis- Michigan. They've beaten Missouri. They, like, when you've done all that, and then here comes UTSA into your building, even though you've been winning games close and you, you understand you can't just turn it on and turn it off, I think human nature is to think I won't take this seriously until things get serious. And that sort of, um, that sort of what we have seen, I would expect that in the, you know, I know how hostile uh, it can feel uh, walking in t- to Wichita state. I would expect that would get their attention right off the bat. And you would see a more focused Memphis team. Cause when they are focused, they've done what it takes to win games. Honestly, the only really bad performance, they had a, they had a bad performance against Villanova. Um, but beyond that, um, you know, at their best, they 
uh, it can be really good. And so I imagine you'll get a much more focused effort against uh, the team once they once they get over there. But it has been a little worrisome. Let's just say that. Talking uh, Memphis basketball with Jeff Calkins. So I, for some reason, I end up watching a lot of Memphis. Uh, I, I, first of all, I like watching. Yeah. They have an incredibly talented team. There's always something going on. There's drama. There's comedy. Everything you want when you, when you, when you're trying to seek out entertainment, Memphis provides it. Uh, and they've got a, a heck of a roster. I mean, uh, former Shocker Jaquan Walton is there now. Former Case Stater uh, Naquan Tomlin recently joined the team, and David Jones is one of the best players I've seen in a while. Uh, how how good is he? And did you expect him to be? this kind of player i think he's a national player of the year candidate no i think people knew he would be they knew he played he was energetic they knew he got a lot of rebounds they knew, you know there was potential but i don't think anyone expected him to do what he's done just had some massive games um he is he is something else like he play he's relentless he sc- can score at every level um he you know against arkansas he just went off um, so he is, he, he is, he's a lot to handle. Um, and he's a terrific player. He also, and I, he's sort of like, and this is one of the complaints about the team a little bit. He's a little individualistic. Like he does not want to give up the ball. You'll see that. Like he does not. And sometimes it feels like he, uh, and Javon Quinterly, who's the other, really the second best player on the team sometimes it feels like they're taking turns more than that they're working together. It's sort of, you know, whose turn is it now uh, to put up the big shot? Um, And so, but yeah, he's a hell of a lot to handle David Jones. And I don't think anyone expected him to be um, as good as he has been, but he is a hundred percent a player of the year candidate. He's an all American candidate. He's been absolutely terrific. The steadying force down the stretch and the guy who uh, last night hit a big, you know, four pointer in overtime because he was fouled on a three, and who won the two previous games with three pointers uh, in the inside the final four seconds is Quinterly, the Alabama transfer, um, who's the point guard. And you just calm that. You, 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 there's a little bit. Memphis fans, I think, have a little bit of a sense of relief and calm when he has the ball in his hands because he's seen everything and is a, you know deeply experienced player. And, um, and and can run the show. And it really is those two have been the best players. I think Tomlin has the potential to join them. Uh, obviously, he, you know, he came over from K-State uh, recently, and he has not been fully integrated really into the team yet. He's fouled out actually the last two games. Um, but he's terrific as well. He can run the court. Um, he's long. He's, he's actually – the exact addition that they needed. Um, so yeah, they got a lot of talent all assembled on the fly over the summer. Like they're, 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 there's, there's no holdovers from last year, except for, uh, I think, uh, let's see, uh, who do we got? We got Malcolm Dandridge is back and then Penny's son. And so beyond that, it's an all new team. Just curious on uh, what your thoughts are with the realignment. Um, obviously this is going on everywhere in every conference. What is uh, what are your thoughts? What are the people in Memphis? What are their thoughts with everything? Are they happy with it? Upset with it? Is Memphis looking to leave and, and go somewhere else? Where, where where is Memphis in this whole shuffling of of teams going here and going there? That's a million dollar question. I'm I've always I'm always curious where Memphis is in all this because yeah. I can't fathom they're happy being in the American. But go ahead. No. But- of course they're not. It, it's been an ongoing disaster. I mean, I think big picture, anyone who thinks realignment's been a good thing for college sports is, <clears throat> I don't know what they're smoking because it's 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 been a disaster and and it, it continues to be. Um, I don't I don't think the, you know I don't think not having a West Coast conference makes sense. I don't think you know Oklahoma and Texas and the SEC makes sense. I don't you know none of it. I, don't, I I'm not a fan of any of it. But for Memphis in particular. It's been an absolute disaster, and everyone continues to get, you know, all these teams continue to leave. Teams that Memphis once considered rivals, Louisville, Cincinnati, Houston, now SMU is leaving. I guess that's sort of sort of a rival. <laughs> um, and, um, 
and there Memphis is. Memphis feels like the, you know, the redheaded stepchild, the one that never gets picked. Everyone else gets picked. Memphis doesn't get picked. And if you look at results on the field, for example, compared to SMU, Memphis has had the better football program. Memphis has had the better basketball program. Memphis has had the better attendance. Like in terms of earned um, accomplishment, honestly, one of them is a tier one research university, according to Carnegie uh, rankings. That's Memphis. And one is not. That's SMU. But for one reason or another, in the case of SMU, it's just money. Uh, Memphis is overlooked. So it's incredibly frustrating. And right now, um, you know, I, it's good that Florida Atlantic has emerged and, and Wichita State was, you know, has at least the hope was that they would be uh, emerge as a uh, as a, you know, another credible tentpole in this conference. But right now you look at the conference and it's just a, it's just a, it's a, a series of games that you're just trying to survive. There's in most of them, there's no real benefit to winning and yet there's disaster looming if you lose well that's no fun it's not a fun way to go through a conference season um and so no it's 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 terrible uh from the Mavs perspective and it's a sort of a crisis and they continue to get hope you know hope they'll get picked next time i don't think there's any right now if you're looking at what might happen i think the next sort of hope is is that if the acc blows up maybe some pieces of the ACC, you know, become something that Memphis could join in. Um, but, you know, there's no realistic probability at this point of joining some other conference. Memphis would be thrilled to leave. I think anyone would be thrilled to leave. But, um, but, but right now they are where they are. And so Penny builds a really strong non-conference schedule because he knows that's the only place where you can really assemble a resume that's going to impress the members of the committee. And, at least this year, it seems like he's been pretty effective in doing that. Well, that's uh, kind of become the uh, <laughs> the typical answer as we continue. I'm just fascinated by uh, Memphis because you're right. When you do look at uh, the makeup of teams in the American as it, it sits right now, Memphis is the one school that's just completely out of place given their heritage, their history. Uh, you, uh, Memphis plays in a an, an incredible facility, the the Forum in downtown Memphis. What's it hold? Nineteen thousand people. How many yeah, were there last night for Texas now. San Antonio? Not, not. It doesn't. I mean, you know, let's be honest. A good. This is a, a Memphis does very well in attendance relative to you know nationally, but relative to their building, they don't do that. You know, whatever they average nine or right. eight or so, something like that. They, now it can, as long as the lower bowl is filled, it feels like it was rowdy last night. But was it half full? No, probably not. Like the truth of the matter is, Static Forum is is nice, and they're going to redo it. The Grizzlies are going to redo it. I, you know, at some point pretty soon, and it'll be nicer. It, it, they would be better off. This won't happen because um, they don't have the money for it. They're putting money right now into a new football stadium or to refurbishing the old football stadium. They would be better off if they had a you know dedicated uh, college basketball arena on campus, um, but they don't. And so they take advantage of, you know, they, they tell recruits we play in a pro arena and the Grizzlies are there and there's some back and forth with the Grizzlies and the and Tiger players and they use that as best they can. Um, but, um, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's too big for a college basketball team unless you're, you know, North Carolina or something. So, um, but it can get rowdy and, um, but it's just like, how excited are you going to be on a Wednesday night when UTSA is in town? You, you, you know, you're not. And, and so it's a little bit like now John Calipari, when he was here in conference USA, it was not that dissimilar. And he'd just say, he just runs through Conference USA, you know, go undefeated or lose one game and 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 be a top three seed and and then go do your damage in the tournament. So in the end, it's sort of a, but that, that's what Memphis has to do. That's what Wichita State did in its final years in the Missouri Valley Conference. Exactly. Just, exactly. And they had, uh, you yeah. know, they had their best, some of their best years in history were those years. So who knows? Uh, Jeff Calkins, yeah. final moments, columnist for the Daily Memphian host of the Jeff Calkins show. So I don't want to let you go without asking you about the Grizzlies because there was a time when we talked to you and we talked about what an up-and-coming franchise this was with a bright new star in John Morant and what the ceiling could be and getting uh, to, you know, winning championships. Those days have uh, faded a little bit. 
Well, it's amazing. It that can be fragile. I mean, you look at you look at Oklahoma City whack with with you know Harden and and Westbrook and Durant, and you probably teams probably people probably thought they were going to win five titles or whatever, and things happen, right? Um, and right now, obviously, things have happened for the Grizzlies, the, the John Morant suspensions, and now his injury. Um, and then other say, you know, Marcus Smart has just ruled out for six weeks. It's been a, it's been, it's been a disastrous. Stephen Adams missing the whole year. It's been a disastrous um, year. There's no question. I think the way that the Grizzlies have to look at it, and the way that Grizzlies fans are are a little bit looking at it, is it doesn't mean is the window's closed. You can have a bad year because of injury and whatever else. And, you know, consider it a little bit of a gap year. You know, the Warriors, the Warriors had a year where they picked number two, they ended up picking James Wiseman. But, it, you know, that it was because Steph was hurt and Clay was hurt and they came back and ended up winning a title. Right. The, the Denver uh, with Jamal Murray was hurt. They ended up getting bounced in the first round. Didn't look like they were a threat to do anything. But when he was back and healthy, they won a title. I think the way the Grizzlies have to look at it is this is a year. Everything went wrong. No good, terrible year. It's not a great draft, but go ahead, get a lottery pick. And it is still true that if you've got Desmond Bain, if you've got Jaron Jackson, if you've got Ja, and then you add Marcus Smart and whatever else, that is still a very good foundation for a very good basketball team. It's just they've not been healthy or eligible to play. That's in the interest of Ja, in the, you know, in the circumstances of Ja. So, I don't think the window has closed for them, but this year has been about as bad as you could possibly imagine. Jeff, we always appreciate it. Thanks for coming on our show and talking yeah. Memphis basketball. No Glad to be Jeff here. Jeff Calkins. So All right, you bet. Uh, yeah, Memphis Grizzlies, 11-10 and 10 on the road. Not three bad. 3-13 and 13 at home. Not good. Doesn't make sense. Mitch Fiegel is our guest. He's the boys coach at Wichita Collegiate. They are off to a... Uh, good start. Mitch, how you doing? I'm doing good. Glad to be with you How's, boys today. We appreciate you doing it. How's How are things going? How's your basketball team? Well, you know, we have been just, uh, we have had the injury bug this year, and so we have been dealing with that since day one. You know, and in any given practice, you know, up to and including yesterday, we've had anywhere from three to four guys out, out of our top ten at any given moment. Now, we are slowly uh, getting healthy, uh, but it but it's it's been a process, let me tell you. Well, Co- go ahead, Duda. Well, Coach, obviously uh, tough with that. I, uh, we've talked to a lot of coaches. It seems like there's been a, a lot of that going on. It, and and I'm not sure with your program is some of that stemmed over from football or is it just one of those things in one of those years where it just seems to be injury riddled doesn't matter what's going on. You know what? It's been a combination for sure. We had a couple guys out from football and then you know last night we just got back Sebastian Heinz Turner, really outstanding sophomore for us, and then AJ Batiste, another really nice sophomore for us was going in for a fast break layup feet kind of got tangled up and he hurt a knee so we're waiting uh, on an MRI to see how bad that is so just when we thought we were really getting rolling again we're kind of uh you know punching numbers and see how we're going to go talking uh, with Mitch Fiegel collegiate boys basketball you know I'm looking at Max Preps because it's so hard to find any information about high school basketball, which irritates the heck out of me. I'd like to see the coaches uh, address this in some fashion or another because I love high school basketball, as you know, and it uh, drives me crazy not to be able to find things. Uh, so it lists you as 3-3-1, three, three, and one, but you did beat Wellington last night, correct? Yeah, we're 4-3. and three. Okay. And, and we got snowed out. We got snowed out on Friday. And we'll go to Clearwater tomorrow. And, you know, of those three losses, um, you know, we were down 15 at Parsons, battled back, got to that one to within a bucket, and clearly had a chance to win win that game. And that's with with a bunch of guys out at that point. And Andale, we led going into the fourth quarter, let that one get away, and we 
had a seven-point lead on Augusta here going into the fourth quarter and let that one get away. So we're not we're not real far off. It's just that, you know, it's like a, a lot of the great older coaches used to talk about your, your offense would be a heck of a lot better when you throw it to a guy with the same color jersey as you're wearing. And we've had a little problem with that this year. <laughs> and uh, Mitch Fiegel, I guess. And, and one of the things I have always liked about you, because I could feel when I said you're 3-3-1 you're three, three and one, and you heard that second three, that number mentioned, I felt you tighten up. I don't know if you did or not, but I felt like <laughs> it. It's no fun to be at 500, right? I mean, that, this is probably driving you nuts. Well, and, and especially on a year when, you know, you on paper, you know, you have a great summer. You're bringing back 11 out of 12 guys from the year before from a team that qualified for the state tournament. That was when that, within a hair of, of being right in the mix of winning the thing and come in ranked number one preseason. And then all of a sudden you start the season without four or five of your best guys. And you're like, wow, this isn't how we had it written up. But you know what? That is the reality of some years. And you know what? I my hats off to the kids that have have had to adjust, make changes, because like I said, we have been competitive every single night. Sebastian coming back yesterday, you know, really kind of put us over the edge a little bit in terms of the direction that we want to go. And and Wellington was five and two, and you know, for the most part, we dominated that game last night. So that that we we all feel a little bit better about that for sure. Coach, uh, curious on your your thoughts of your midseason tournaments. Is this something you really like? And if so, how important is it to you and your team to go in and obviously it, you want to have a great performance? But is is this a good time to you know get a little bonding session going with the guys and and that sort of thing? I, I just curious on your uh, your thoughts about the midseason tournaments. And where are you going, Mitch? Uh, we we go to El Dorado, and you know our our theory on. Uh, mid-season tournaments has always been that's that's the best time to get outside of your comfort zone because you know Emporia's over there they got a really nice record right now Goddard's over there sitting with a good record and of course Capon's over there undefeated and so you know you're going to go see some people that you know a couple classifications outside of yours you know you're going to see better athletes they're all going to be well coached and you're going to be challenged in everything that you do and so we've never worried, you know, our record, of course, many years has taken care of itself, but that's never been, been the issue. We want the process to be more important than the record. And, you know, when you, when you look back at it over the years, you know, I don't, I don't know how many state tournaments we've been to. We've been to a few, but we've never, we've never been to one seed in a state tournament since we've been going there. So it's not about your seed. It's about where have you been? Who have you seen? What have you done? You know, what have you been exposed to? And, that's the great thing about the midseason tournament. Plus, at El Dorado, I, I love the fact that it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And every other year, if you're going to be in the state tournament, you're going to have to play Thursday, Friday, Saturday because it rotates Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, or Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And if you haven't prepared for that, that's, that's hard to get used to. Final moments here with Mitch Fiegel, the boys' basketball coach at Wichita Collegiate. I've been, uh, I've been a proponent of – a shot clock in high school basketball for a long, long time. I presume you are because I don't think I've met anyone who isn't. Uh, it looks like we're going to experiment, give it a trial run uh, next year, but that just means that they're going to go to a shot clock because if you give it a trial run, nobody's going to want to go back to the old ways. Uh, what are your thoughts on finally getting to a shot clock in high school basketball? Well, I think overall it's good It's good for high school basketball because if you've got kids that are going to play at the next level, that gets them used to that experience. Now, you know, w with that said, you know, I, I, ju I just looked at that this afternoon, and we're going to give it a try, but we're not going to use it in postseason play. So I'm like, okay. What? I, I, yeah, we're not going <laughs> to use it in postseason play next year. So why would I want to do something for an entire season and then not have that be a part of the postseason? Oh I don't know. That one, that one threw me for a loop. So tell me we're going to use the shot clock or we're not going to use it, and I'll be ecstatic. But tell me we're going to use it for the regular season and not the postseason. Well, no, nah, I'm not very excited about that. Well, I didn't read that deeply into it. That's just flabbergasting to me. 
You're going to ask the teams that get to the postseason uh, to completely change the style uh, without a shot clock because the game's vastly different uh, with and without a shot clock. That just doesn't make one iota of sense to me. I'll um, make sure I don't that get I'm, it. Uh, read that right, but I just want to. Uh, okay. Um. We are breaking news right now on the Bob and Jeff show. That is, that's We're absurd. Trying to figure this out. That would be absolutely absurd. And as a coach and as a player, I would not be happy with the fact of playing one way for the whole season and then having to change everything in the postseason. Do you have an update, Mitch? Yeah, I'm looking at it right now, but I know I saw that today. That's crazy. Okay, there it uh, is. It says that the trial will only be during the regular season. <laughs> Asinine. We are the laughing stock of the world on that one. I that's, yeah. uh, that's Boys, I'm, not, I'm not getting on that bandwagon. Okay, I, I no, got we it. don't need. <laughs> you let me get in that hot water, Mitch. I'll handle. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll let you fight that one. That's that's why, you know, man. I've, it seems like <laughs> I've had a lot on my plate today, and that's why, I thought, well, you know what? These boys will lighten me up a little bit today, so I'll I'll take a few minutes with them. Certainly, you've done that. <laughs> Well, that's what we're good for. Thank you for coming on. I hope everyone gets healthy and you get back to having the kind of team that you expected. Uh, We'll talk with you soon. Okay. Thanks, guys. I'll see you. Mitch Fiegel from Wichita Collegiate. I'm going to take time and actually read this. That is absolutely ridiculous. Who makes these? Who's the person that makes these rules? We'll talk about this more uh, in hour number two. I want to... Okay, I haven't fair enough. read the release yet. Fair and we know that I can't read very well, right. so it's good that well, you read especially it. especially with your eyesight issues. Thank you, sir. So uh, take a look at this. Uh, I'm thrown for a loop. Back in a moment.